Crazy. Awesome, man. Crazy. How have you been? Uh, dude, uh, probably the same as you guys, just like in a total vortex. Like it's, it's like a lifetime every week. Like when you figure certain things out, and I know you guys have, man, I see you guys everywhere. I hear about you from Marcy. Uh, <laughs> just time isn't real. Time isn't real. And you just, you just go from idea to completely new reality like that. So yeah. it's been, it's been uh, quite lovely. It's, it's interesting. Cause like, you know, I started kind of, I guess, in like the introspective personal development world when I was, was 2003. And at the time, I think when you mm -hmm. start, I oh, just lost you. You still there? You there? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I hear you. I'm clear. You're breaking out. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh eclipses. <laughs> dude, the, 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 the eclipses. And uh, the, the thing is, man, it's like, you know, the presidential address last night. Oh, man. Okay, hold on. You're muted. There you go. Crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, between between the eclipse, we had the the uh, presidential address last night. We have it. It is the most exciting time in history. Um, you know that during a uh, congressional shutdown, that congressmen are not immune from political pro or from uh, legal action when Congress is in session they're immune there's like a political you know immunity they can't be prosecuted wow. like a like a citizen but when there's a government shutdown they can so there's thousands of subpoenas that went out um just prior to the shutdown so interesting to see what'll what'll happen yeah i just to your point before about like you know things progressing when i kind of started in this world i never you know like when you first start every insight and every awakening is like so monumentally big and just right. like your world gets rocked every single time and then after a while you know like the big rocking stops and it becomes a lot more micro even though it creates a lot more ripples it's just that that feeling of like okay i got rid of like the really big stuff and now honestly in the last like year even more in the last six months it's felt like like you said, it's like like a snake shedding its skin. I, it's happening so fast that I almost don't recognize myself. Like right. week, week and the way I operate, and it's just bizarre. Like I never, after having that experience so early on, and not for like you know a decade, let's say, I couldn't possibly have imagined that it can go bigger and faster. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if it's like energistic or just where we're at in life, but I'm even seeing it in our clients and yeah. we're at a house and, uh, do you know Jason Hornig? Uh, I do. I do. We've, we've met uh, a handful of times. Cool. So we, uh, we do a mastermind, uh, what well, we started it last year. So like this was the second year rent a house. Okay. We were up with, um, do you know Mike Geary? I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we had so a we great conversation in uh, Baby Bathwater a few months ago. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so we were up at his house and we were hanging out with him. And one night, like a few of us decide to uh, take some mushrooms. Some people took like micro doses of acid. And there's like Shut nine up. people in this house. And I swear, like the experience of everyone in the house was that time stopped. Like time stood still. Yeah. People were like, Oh, you know, it's it's like eleven thirty, right? And you'd look at the time, and it's like eight thirty. And then someone would be like, "Oh, it's like one a.m." And it'd be like eight forty-five. And you're like, "What the fuck is happening?" <laughs> <laughs> that's so bizarre. Those, those are the, that's the thing, though, man. It, I it, I believe it is. Uh, it's a pr perfect combination of of the frequencies on the planet that are changing, which is affecting everything from the bottom up, and so politically, economically. Um, geographically, socially, all of these things are changing, but still people can choose to go with that expansion or not go with it. Yeah. For those of us who, who have chosen it, it's, we're just surfing, man. You know, yeah. there's, there's no, you know, it's like, imagine, imagine a, a surfer 
standing on the on the board just catching this incredible incredible set and you can't imagine the surfer looking around and going oh my god oh my god look at the water look at the wave <laughs> you don't do that you just like keep your head down you just tuck in and you just feel it you feel it and so you know that's and those that do stop and try and look around or stupidly who try and control the wave man you're gonna you're gonna crash and and who knows you know reincarnate and ready player one reset okay <laughs> pop, pop back in that's fine <laughs> but for you know for those of us like it like i mean I've, i totally died on on uh new year's eve you know wow. I, I woke up i woke up and i realized that oh shit i just jumped timelines like i shouldn't have been driving it was it was icy it was snowy um you know i just i woke up the next day and i and i had had i had this super vivid dream and i saw the truck that i was driving flip i saw it in the ditch i saw it all twisted up i saw myself like you know done but I woke up in my bed and I was like, oh shit. Yeah, I totally jumped timelines. Wow. Holy. Okay, cool. Here we go. Happy New Year. <laughs> wow. Wow. And that's right, well, happening that's happening all the time. Let, let's um because we're gonna I, I know before we start the conversation, we're gonna actually before we start the actual interview, we're gonna say all this amazing stuff. So I figure let's just start the interview and we'll see what comes cool. out and we'll we'll have like the whole inquisitive because I really want to find out where you've been and what you've been up to and um, we'll just see where the conversation goes. Cool. Cool. Can't wait, man. Really, really appreciate this. Yeah. Awesome. I, it's, it's interesting. I've like, we've been in each other's circles and haven't really like connected. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna, this is almost going to be like, we meet at a coffee shop and we get to have a conversation I and I get to kind of like find out about you. So this will be really cool. And, and, and likewise, man, just really just a, a great, great frequency that we get to share. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. So welcome back to the Have It All podcast. Uh, today is going to be, uh, I would venture to say, one of the ones that you're going to want to keep in your catalog and go back to uh, because the guest that I have here today um, is someone that, that I've been kind of following for a while. His videos are absolutely amazing. Um, his insights are incredible. Um, and so I'm super excited to have him on the show today. His name is Jesse Elder. So first of all, welcome to the show, Jesse. Thanks, Elon. So good to see you, man. You too. So Jesse and I have connected uh, in a peripheral way for a while. Like we've been in each other's lives for years and just kind of like touch, 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 but never really gone deep. So um, you guys are going to actually get to listen in on kind of like a fly on a wall on, um, on a really, really cool conversation where we get to learn about each other a little bit more. So the first thing I want to know is because I, I was following you, you were, you were creating incredible content and... Um, then you kind of just disappeared for a while and you were like, I am leaving the social media space. Um, so what happened? Like where, where did you go? What did you find out? What were the purposes? Really? Uh, th those are great three questions, Elon. Where'd you go? What'd you find? And, and, and why, you know, why yeah. did you do it? Um, and yeah, that, and that was, a, that was an interesting thing. I'm, I'm, I feel very, um, like, like most of us, I've, I have an interesting relationship with social, right? Because you know, on the one hand, it's your, your bread and butter and your, your connection and, and your you know, dopamine on demand. I mean, anytime you're feeling bad, just, just make, make a post, count the likes, feel a little better about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> or, is it, or is that just me? But, but, so on the one hand, there's that. But on the other side, there's a, um, I've, I've, I've experienced so much, and I've done this my whole life, so much uh, beauty and, and deepening by just, just pulling back and pulling away and going into the, the laboratory, going into you know, the world, stepping into a different uh, environment, changing lifestyles, changing identities, really, uh, as you know, whatever feels most in alignment with that, you know, we each have our own signal, we each have our own frequency. And so following that frequency, um, and so when I, when I, you know, pulled back from, from Facebook a, a couple of years ago, it was really uh, just for that. I just wanted to go back to the lab and I realized my content was getting a little bit uh, stale. You know, I didn't feel fresh and, and I didn't have metrics to support that. People loved it, you know, blah, blah, blah. There was people were being affected and, and I felt like I was on purpose, but it just didn't have that edge, man. It didn't have that it. And I thought, man, I, I can't, I can't afford that. I, I'm, I'm going to be miserable. So I just, I pulled back and, and, one of the things that, that happened as a result of that 
um, besides the the, the uh, predictable rejuvenation and coming back and all hungry and you're like, oh, I miss everybody. And, you know, that, that's natural. Um, but what I didn't expect was uh, to, to find or, or it, it found me or something happened, but some very, um, very, I'll just call them frequencies, very interesting frequencies and some very different ways of looking at life and some very different ways of, of seeing um, and, and feeling and, and, and observing and intuiting and all of this stuff. And next thing you know, man, all of this um, improv philosophy started flowing and you and I are connected to some very interesting people, people who yeah. probably actually channel and all that other stuff. That ain't me. Like I'm not that guy. Uh, I, I love my brain. I love my vocabulary. And I, I proudly, uh, and, and, and stupidly take, take a lot of pride in the stuff that I say. And, you know, I've got as healthy ego as anybody else. So I'll say, yeah, it's me saying this shit. But what it really got got strange, uh, and you and I talking about it before we started recording, everything is happening so fast. Yeah. Things are changing. Industries are being invented and wiped out almost overnight. Yeah. So how can we possibly calibrate quick enough to predict the changes, to anticipate the changes that are going to be happening three years from now? Nobody can do that. All we can do is completely tap in completely weaponize our intuition, allow ourselves to have on demand 24 seven real time access to cosmic Google and get the exact best next thing that we're supposed to do and then fucking do that. And when we do that, um, I've, I've been, I've been aggressively split testing paradigms since I was 18 years old, you know, back when I was questioning my martial arts instructor who said, this is how you do this. I was like, yeah, but I, I tried that. And I got my ass beat. So maybe, <laughs> maybe there's another way. Um, and, and I've just continued to do that. And so now that, you know, my relationship with time, my relationship with money, my relationship with, with sex, with love, my relationship with non-physical intelligence, all of that is continually being upgraded, continually being uh, calibrated. Um, and, and, and you're doing the same thing, man. I, I, I know you're riding those same things, yeah. those same frequencies. And the cool thing, everybody can. We just got to use logic as the app that it is, not the freaking OS. Logic yeah. is an app, but, it, but it's not the OS. So good. You know what I just realized that we kind of glossed over? People are like, who the heck is Jesse Elder? <laughs> and why is he talking <laughs> yeah. about, you know, paradigm shifts and, and time frequencies? Yeah, I'm just a, I'm just a homeschool. I'm just a homeschooled kid from South Texas, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're, I mean, well, what do you call yourself when people are like, Hey, Jesse, what do you do? What do you, what do you even say to that? I know that it's a question that I always like, I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it honestly, man, it, it really depends on how I'm feeling at the moment. Yeah, same. <laughs> so you know, if somebody's at a at a at a mixer or a, you know, I don't go to many networking or not working events, but I I do. Uh, you know, somebody will say, "So, what do you do?" Which for a lot of people, quite frankly, is just a chance for them to tell you what they do. So, <laughs> so you know, true. I'm I'm more interested in that actually. So if they say, "So, what do you do?" and I get the sense that they're kind of like that tugboat, you know, chasing the thing. Uh, I'll just look at him. I'll say about what, and that kills the conversation. Yeah, uh, and then they, and then they're like, uh, "No, what do you do?" As if you you know, I don't speak English or something. Yeah. and then uh, and and it just depends. You know, sometimes I'll just say, you know, I'm I'm a consultant. Uh, they go, oh. And then they talk about themselves, which is great. That's actually <laughs> actually what I'm much more interested in. You know, I'm much more interested in them. Um, and and tactically and strategically, if it's somebody who I believe that I can help or somebody who I think, um, you know, may, maybe I can lend some, some, you know, some uh, perspective uh, or as, as uh, Mike Bledsoe and I were talking about this a couple of years ago, when I spoke at uh, his Marbell Shrug Mastermind, I said, dude, I, I just, I've realized that uh, companies, individuals, entrepreneurs, they just hire me to lease my frequency. That's mm -hmm. all they're doing. And so I'm like a service human, you know, there's service dogs that just are basically dogs with jackets and, and they just show up and then they have this amazing effect on people. I'm just a service human, man. I just yeah. dress weird sometimes and show up and do my thing. So, 
and, and I'm sure that's cost me a lot of money to not have an elevator pitch and all that. But what it's given me is a complete friction free, again, rapidly calibrating perspective because I'm not bound by a label. I'm not bound by, uh, you know, a particular um, intellectual uh, prison that people are going to try yeah. and put on me. And I'm actually able to, to feel what's happening for somebody right now. And they say, oh, and increase conversions. I'm like, um, how's your sex life? Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. You know, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. It was so good. Which, and, and I didn't even answer your question. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's, or maybe I did. It really is funny because people always ask me too. And it's, I always play with it because it's kind yeah. of like the moment, what feels good. Right. Um, exactly. And I love that you said that about like, people pay me to be around the frequency. One of the things that I've kind of realized is that when people hire us, their dreams just become manifest. Right. And so I'm like, people ask me sometimes what you do. I'm like, I work with people to make their dreams come true or like mm -hmm. hire me to have their dreams come true. And again, it's just, sometimes I do it for, to see people's reactions. And other times, like you right. said, it's, it's, Cause I really do believe that I'm speaking to someone that, that would actually get that communication. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, it, and probably if you didn't feel that you wouldn't say that. Exactly. You know, you would say I'm a digital strategist or, or whatever, you yeah. know, which is also accurate. Yeah. So <laughs> now that you're, so here's what I love about Jesse. And um, I, I think what you do is you bring a really unique perspective to let's just call it for what it is like the kind of the personal development, spiritual realm. Um, and what I love about you is that you do the work for yourself. There's a lot of these people who are kind of, um, what do I call them? Like, like headline coaches, you know, like they read a bunch of books and they can spit out a bunch of good things that sound really good. But when you talk to them, you're like, you don't have any experience like, you haven't experienced that thing. And that's what I've always appreciated about you. You're raw, real. You say whatever is there for you to say with the full understanding that that might not at all be someone's uh, reality at that time. And you've always been someone who's like willing to challenge the reality and just kind of let it sit there. And so with that being said, I guess what I'm curious about now is like, what have you been up to? Like what's, I know we were talking before about like how fast timelines are moving and we feel like we're getting all these downloads. Like what was 2017 like for you? You know, what were some of these amazing lessons and, and what are you carrying into 2018? Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a great, a great, uh, a great opening Elon. And I, and I want to, I'm going to speak to something that, that I know that you and your brother embody this, uh, the, the you know, mutual friends that we have embody this. Uh, the things that we teach or say, uh, I, I think, I think advisors, coaches, consultants, speakers, healers, authors, you know, let's just call it the helpers. Yeah. I think they fall into, into two camps pretty cleanly. One is the people who are giving prescriptions and mm -hmm. the other is the people who are sharing descriptions. And so I'm not a prescriber of things. I'm not going to lay out a fucking 67 step formula and you know, here's, Oh, I actually am in my garage right now. <laughs> You know what I'm most proud of? These books. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Ty. Sure, that's what you're proud of. But I mean, he's he's a twisted genius, and you got to give him that. He is a twisted genius. But um, but the the point the point is that I'm not going to give a prescription and say this is what you should do, um, because all I know is this is what I've done that produced X result for me, or this is what I did last week that worked really great for a client. And, you know, we'll show you. And if you're savvy enough and, and self-authorized enough not to sacrifice your core and not to bastardize your values and not to, you know, whore out your principles to try and become somebody else, mm -hmm. then it's probably going to work for you. But if you're, if you're seeking, you know, the, the, you know who, who do I need to pretend to be to make enough money so that I can pay for my addictions and get people to like me, I ain't your dude. Yeah. So. I, I really appreciate that you said that about, you know, that, that there are people who, and, and God bless them, you know, they're, they're endeavoring to make the world a better place. I just, I've been so blessed to have really um, binary experiences from, from a very young age. And by that, I mean, you, you, you're in the ring, you won or you lost. It's not a matter of subjective opinion. 
you know, the dude either, either, either got me in an arm bar or I choked him out. There's, there's no, um, there's no debate about that. And I watched literally hundreds of people get into the ring with a head full of theory to watch that theory melt the mm. moment they, the moment they got punched or the moment that somebody physically grabbed them. I mean, violence is a, is a beautiful um, truth serum. And so it really just eliminates all the theory that doesn't work. And I was uh, very fortunate to experience that from a very early age so that by the time I, um, you know, began doing what I'm doing now, it, it, that, that's the bedrock, that's the foundation. And so, you know, in, in terms of, of, of everything that I'm sharing, I, I know that it works. I can see the result in my own life. I can see the, the way just, man, I'll, I'll just literally, um, 2017, I got rid of my house in Austin um, and just decided to start traveling. It was like a Forrest Gump epiphany. Like, oh, let me go, let me go run. Uh, and so I put everything in storage, uh, started traveling with this one bag, that has become this sort of like piece of the brand now, actually, it's just the leather bag. Wow. And I just started taking one way tickets around the world. Wow. And I would stay someplace for a couple of days until I got an idea to go someplace else. And I book a ticket and I'd go to the airport. Sometimes I'd go to the airport, figure out where I want to go, book a ticket. And I did that for most of 2017. And, um, and I did it to test some theories. I did it to, to uh, heal my heart a little bit. I went through a, through a pretty intense breakup at the very beginning of the year. And I just started to, um, I, I stopped one of the, the, the effects of that. The effects was I stopped seeing people as their social identities. Uh, I, I literally, literally became blind to the label um, that society puts on us or that we put on ourselves. And so I became um, immune for the most part to somebody's financial status to their uh, social status, to their relationship status, mm. to their, their, I mean, I've been blind to political affiliations my whole life. I've, I've never voted, but I, I started to realize that every, I mean, just, we hear it all the time. Everything's energy, but I be, that's how I began to live that way. And I, and I would have, you know, on, on one morning I'd, I'd be speaking to hundreds of you know, Amazon sellers and, and uh, you know, seven and eight figure business owners. And then, the next morning I'd be walking downtown Kiev and, and talking to a homeless guy in Russian. Uh, he wasn't talking to Russian. I wasn't talking to Russian. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm literally thinking, this is so interesting. You know, the day before I'm talking to a guy who just, just had a, a very, um, a very successful 10 figure exit or 10, I'm sorry, uh, eight figure exit. To, it was, it was a $10 million exit. He just sold his business. And, and I'm looking at that guy's energy and then I'm having a conversation with this dude who's in between residences, AKA homeless. And I'm looking at his energy and all I'm seeing is that light that's behind their eyes. Wow. Everything else was, was irrelevant. Really. Everything else was, was like, uh, like what color socks are you wearing? Who fucking cares, man? I don't care what color socks you're wearing. It's so interesting that you say that I just this, like in the last week or two. So we went to this mastermind, we were in Utah and mm -hmm. You know, whenever you spend like a week with a bunch of different people, obviously the energies are different, the frequencies, what people are up to is different. Um, and this was very different than our first one. Like the first one was kind of, you know, everyone was kind of in that Facebook marketing world, if you will. So it was very kind of archetyped. This was, you know, we had a, a crypto guy, a health guy, a, you know, Jason, his brother who helps them. We had me and my brother. It was just like people from all over the map doing all sorts of things in all sorts of different bodies and all sorts of different shapes with all sorts of different speaking patterns. Yeah. And I kind of became acutely aware and, and it probably had to do something with that, that one day where we, we were just microdosing and stuff like that, yeah. which always kind of, you know, re removes some of the filters that we have. Right. Right, right. And I really just started to tune into kind of like you said, the, the way I described it was almost like seeing people's souls. Like I, I stopped mm -hmm. seeing the body and I stopped mm -hmm. seeing the profession and their age and the this and the that. And so when I came back home, I'm literally walking through the airport. And that thought was so present for me. And I'm just watching, you know. The, yes. the person serving yeah. coffee and the person yes. collecting tickets and the woman on the plane and 
all this stuff. And it's just weird that you said that because it's, it's been something that's been carried over. Like yesterday I went to Walgreens and I'm, I'm seeing this guy and we have so many judgments and it's so beautiful to just be present to the judgments, mm -hmm. not get mad that I'm having the judgments, which used to be the way I, you know, at first right. you're not aware that you're having the judgments, right, right, right. the judgments and you start, you get like a little upset or maybe a lot upset right. that you're having the judgment. You're like, I right. think I'm a better person than that. Why am I judging that this person has you know, <laughs> cross-eyed and glasses and is moving so slow? And I, now I've, I, it was such a strange experience. I'm, I'm standing there next to this person and he's trying to help me get my photos and he's struggling, mm -hmm. struggling, like can't find my photos everywhere. And I'm watching this old version of Elon get really mad. Like, why do they hire this slow moving person? And you know, he can't even see, like, I'm literally listening to all this stuff and I'm going, mm -hmm. wow. and then on the other hand, I'm like, I'm seeing this person as this soul, this light that is here to serve me yeah. in this one exact moment. And I was just sitting there going, wow, this is so interesting to kind of see the, the, the both worlds, the dichotomy of it playing off each other. So it was so intriguing. I kind of walked it? down and I went, wow, this is really cool. Like I want to play more with this. You know, I, I really want to bring myself to that place. And then sure enough, you know, this morning, like my daughter does something and like all that stuff goes out the window and like, <laughs> she's not this little slow light thing. I'm like, ah, you know? <laughs> so it, it's, it's, um, oh, man. listen, we're still human. Up. I love that. Um, I think a lot of people, especially in the coaching space have this, notion i have to look a certain way or other people otherwise people are going to hire me or i have to sound a certain way or dress a certain way or and and you like us just like fuck all of that like this yeah. is who i am you either what going to want to be around this or you're not going to yeah. want to be around this and i and i i find that to be extremely beautiful um are to, you to that point like, yeah go uh, ahead. no no well, I, i'm i'm not and we'll, and we'll talk about yeah. maybe maybe some of the some of the, the frames there um I, I love what you just said. I mean, everything you just said is is incredible. I mean, your experience of of stepping outside of the realm of labels and seeing people for the light and and for the for the sparks that they are, but keeping your feet on the ground at the same time. I mean, that's that's the beautiful dichotomy. Um, I have had a um, a client come to San Antonio, where I now live, and and uh, the here in my library. <laughs> wow, that's really a really nice room. room. It's uh, there's a banana plant in here for some reason, in case you feel like eating bananas <laughs> while you're in the library while reading, <laughs> you know, as one does. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I had a uh, client come in and a very successful um, doctor and uh, and just a, just a beautiful soul who had created a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a, of a, a gilded cage for himself. You know, mm -hmm. he knew how, where the money was coming in and he was very good professionally with what he did, but his artist was dying. And he, he flew to San Antonio. Um, you know, we had dinner the night before. We, we just basically, and this is probably a, a huge professional mistake I'm about to make, we just hung out all day. Like we just hung out. And I lived a Jesse life and he lived his life and we just were two dudes hanging out on a, on a Thursday. And yet every interaction that happened, every server, the waitress, the, the, you know, people that we would talk to, everything was a miraculous experience. Mm. And, and he, he messaged me a couple of days later and he's like, what the heck happened? Mm. He was like, did you hypnotize me? Because my life is not the same. Wow. I'm like, bro, bro, I, I didn't do shit. I didn't do anything to you. That's all you motherfucker and he was like he sent me this beautiful text it brought tears in my eyes he said i i see people and i never used to like people very much now i look at them and all i see are sparks of energy wow i was like whoa yeah. and now he's like he's like making art and i mean it's just like yes like that's what's in all of us and you don't have to give up the professional life to have the artist's life they're mm -hmm. supposed to support each other yeah. so i love that you're that you're, that you're talking about that and, and processing that so cleanly because people will hear 
what you said about that experience in the airport and every one of us has had the experience of judging our own judgments. I mean, it's ridiculous. And so eventually we can just get off of that and just be badass human beings, which is what we're here for. Um, so when, when uh, you know, I went through all this travel in, in uh, 2017 and I literally just, just woke up one day and realized that, wow, like I'm, I'm done, you know, I'm done traveling. And um, mm. 24, hour, 24 hours later, I was in San Antonio, which I did wow. not expect to be in. But this is the town that I grew up in. I, I built my, my first business here, all the karate schools and, um, you know, had a whole life here found this place, which is beautiful. This is full disclosure. I don't want to be a douchey internet marketer. This is not, I don't own this library. This is the beautiful private area in the residences that I live in. Um, but seeing as how nobody reads books, it's basically mine. So, <laughs> you know, it's funny. My parents just moved into a place also and the library, like the meeting room library is the most beautiful room and no one nobody uses goes it. there. Nobody uses it. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So, so with the, um, you know, when, when I, when I stopped traveling and realized that, okay, you know, you know, if 2017 was like the year of the feather, right? Let me just, let me just fly everywhere and literally just tap into some of these other nomadic frequencies. 2018 is the year of the roots and literally nice. putting, putting roots down. Um, I, I, I've been writing a lot more poetry and doing more music and, and actually using art as a lead magnet. Um, you know, using this, like I, I did, did a Facebook post a couple of weeks ago and people, went apeshit over it. Uh, we boost, you know, I put a hundred bucks into a boosted post, see what would happen. We had like 760 shares on a hundred wow. bucks. People are just like, Oh my God, not a, not even a targeted audience, just like whoever likes your page. And uh, so then we use that as a lead magnet for the full version of the manifesto. And now we're selling like an $11 meditation. And we're, I, I just checked the stats this morning. We're 12 Xing our ad spend on, on that little thing because it's, it's just fucking art. It's all it is. And there's, there's no, there's no hook in there anywhere. It's all welcome mat. And, mm. uh, and it just hit me and I, and maybe this is a paradigm for us as marketers. Um, it just hit me last night that, you know, when I, when I look at, at, you know, a video that will drop and, you know, we'll get a, you know, a few thousand organic views. Well, I used to look at that up until very recently, I would look at that and say, I got, 2,400 views in whatever time period I got this many shares or I have this many customers. And it was a very, very possessional sort of a thing, like a very, uh, you know, outside in, you know, come mm. here kind of thing. And it just hit me. I was like, no, holy shit. No, no, it's not. I'm not acquiring anything. I just got invited into 2,400 people's homes. Mm. I just got invited as a guest into the lives of 2,400 people. And yes, people, you know, the skeptics and, and the reality folks will say, uh, yeah, but those are three second views and they're not actually watching. They're, they're scrolling past you to get to the next video. That's cool. I don't care because out of those 2,400 people, there's probably one or two or three that are watching it that, that are going to be affected. And for every thousand people that are affected, I get an email from someone saying I was going to kill myself when I saw your fucking video. Yeah. And now I, re now I realize what it's all about man, that's why I'm making the video. Yeah. And, and so that was a rant. Um, you know, you, can I just offer you something? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I've kind of been in that same space for, for a while now. I, I think you would, you would agree with this that like we're vessels. I mean, we're, we're yeah. energistic vessels, right? Like you and I, my brother and some of the people that we know, we've just chosen to, explore this form in this way. Like, like yeah. this information resonates with us, right? Like we, we re, we're constantly in the state of remembering who we actually are. And then we go out into this world and hope that our existence helps other remember who they are. You know, I was just on a coaching call yesterday and this woman got on, she's like smile ear to ear. And I was like, you know, what, what happened in the last two weeks? She's like, I found myself. Hmm. And I, 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 you know, I was kind of like, like I saw the light, you know, the, like when the light goes on it and I was laughing, I was like, you were never lost. You right. know, you just kind of remember exactly. who you are. And exactly. so, so when we share this stuff, you know, like I used to get super attached, like, oh, they didn't like my video and they didn't like this. Now to me, it's just, 
it's not I, it's an energy frequency, right? Like we're putting out a universal energy frequency that happens to be going through us, through this medium, whatever this medium is at this point. And then there are 2,400 other people who happen to be vibrating and loving that frequency. Love it. To, Love it. To, to that point, here's where I'm at with this. And I'd love your, your, your opinion on this, right? Like I see frequencies out there that absolutely do not resonate with mine, whether it's political or even certain, you know, people in the online space. Um, I don't want to name any names because it doesn't really matter. Like, I, I think you get the idea. Yep. And there, these people are getting millions of views. And the conundrum that I have internally, and, and this is just like something that I battle with back and forth is like, is that really the energy that people are seeking? Or is it the energy that everyone is just at and people are speaking to that energy because they know that that's where it's yeah. easy to tap in? Because I sometimes feel like we, and I know because I've heard some of your videos, like we are people that look to raise people or, or I don't know, raise, move people, right? To like a different energistic frequency. Mm -hmm. Are all those other people just like speaking to where the energy is and that's why the views are so big and that's like where people yeah. want to be. It just, I don't know that there's an answer. It's just like something that I've always been kind of it's brilliant, wondering. brilliant. And I, and I think really Elon, what you just spoke to is a, a very new, a very fresh bridge um, between the old ways of marketing and and this new thing that we're into the old most most online marketing is really um traditional offline marketing made virtual so True. the same psychological principles uh speaking the limbic system uh, all of that and i have made peace with that because i remember when i was living a very fearful um fear-based don't think i can do it and when when in that phase you know when you're in that trough of, of life that's the only thing you can hear and so you know you're literally blind to somebody saying you can do anything you know you just don't you don't you're, you don't even notice it because your, yeah. your face is in the fucking shit <laughs> and so you don't even real you know you don't even see the sunshine so you know it's like it, I, th I think it really comes down to being multilingual being able to speak whatever language we we can speak to help somebody wherever they're at so that's one part the other part is people that are getting millions or hundreds of millions of views um the way that i look at it is they're they're preparing people and they're preparing people you know i i don't if if i if i teach a you know a class on high value selling for example and we're helping somebody put together a hundred thousand dollar mastermind I, I'm not mad at the person that's selling, you know, how to, how to build a $7 ebook. Like that's a perfectly valid um, paradigm in this infinite landscape of commerce. Sure. So that's great, man. And, and, you know, I was the guy that was like, how do I build a $7 ebook? <laughs> so, you know, it's like, it's all, it's all perfect. Um, and, and, and with that being said, your uh, really, I, I like your comment about, um, what, what I would use the word invite people to elevate. Um, I, I personally am not here to get people to do anything. I'm, sure. I'm not here to, you know, try and move people from one spot to the other. What I do uh, endeavor is to um, live my life in a way uh, that people can observe uh, of their own volition without manipulation, without coercion, they can just observe, hey, here's this dude that doesn't seem terribly concerned with what people think about him. Damn, that must be freeing. Mm -hmm. Or they can go, what a fucking freak, man. This guy dresses sometimes like Mad Max had sex with Victoria's Secret in the broom closet. <laughs> and so it's just like, but here's the thing. And, and you made the point earlier about, you know, how people look and how they dress and all that. Dude, I know my conversions go up. When I do a webinar, with a collared shirt, uh, when I start with a sports jacket and a collared shirt, and then when I start teaching, when I get out of the story and I start teaching, I take my jacket off and I roll up my sleeves. I know that that sends very simple psychological messages that, oh shit, it's about to get real. Here's a successful guy wearing society's um, collar. You know, the collar literally is a uh, mechanism of control. Hmm. And so, 
You know, when, when, when we are conditioned to wear collars, I mean, that's what police do. They collar a criminal, you know, it means to capture, you know, you put a collar on a dog. Um, and I, and I like fashion as much as anybody else. I'm just pointing out the, yeah. you know, the little subtle things there. I think instead of someone dressing to get the audience to like them, how about dress so that the audience can see that you actually like yourself? Mm, so good. And then, and then people are free to make up their own mind. And yeah. so, you know, it's, it's just, uh, I, I really think that we have an opportunity to live life as art. Um, and, and the money is, is, the money comes in regardless of what we are doing. Yes, positioning is important and all of that. But if you want to be on the leading edge and if you want to create things, you may take a temporary lull uh, financially. So just keep that other shit running, you know, keep your funnel going. That's converting well while you are using your additional time, energy, and resources to craft something badass that's never been done, test it intelligently, and then follow that. And you'll continually just be able to upgrade. And uh, it's very, very exciting time that we live in. Yeah, man. It's, it's interesting for a lot of people that what you just spoke to is terrifying. Yeah. You know, releasing yeah. that which works for something that, because maybe that thing stopped feeling good to them mm. or it's become inauthentic for where they are or, you know, what I'm obviously talking about some high level sure. thinkers, not people who are like, well, now, you know, that funnel doesn't work because I spend a dollar and it doesn't mean whatever. Right, um, right, right. So for those types of people that are sitting there on the sidelines with this creative idea or something that they want to pursue, but they feel so locked into mm. golden handcuffs or yeah. whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Uh, Cause I know this is a question that a lot of people have, and I know you, you work with a ton of people in all different spaces. Um, what's, what's something or a piece of advice or something that you can share with them about stepping out and, and, and taking that, that leap. Yeah. Great question, man. Um, I, I think just to look at it very practically, because when somebody is locked in, not locked into, when somebody is is operating um, and functioning very well within a linear, logical, um, prioritized, time blocked life, that's great, man. There's literally nothing wrong with that. You know, my dream day is when I open the calendar, and there's nothing, zero. There's nothing, but I've got a project board that's full of stuff that I can't wait to do. Like to me, that's the ultimate thing. But for somebody who is in a, in a very, you know, if I do this three times, I get this. And then I do this and they're pushing buttons, pulling levers. That can feel really good too. Yeah. My, my appeal to them or my, my, my suggestion would be just look at how much time you've got since linear time is an illusion anyway, but it's a useful one. There are 168 hours every week. Take out 50 of them for your core work. You're left with 118, and those are good numbers, 11 and 8. You have 118 hours left. Yeah, okay, sleep a little bit. Cool, knock yourself out. Sleep like a drugged, hibernating grizzly bear. You still have 40, 50, 60 hours left. Take 10% of that, five hours, six hours a week, and be a white belt at something. And go and be dumb, go and make mistakes, go and ask mm. stupid questions and go and, and, and do that. Because what's going to happen is you'll come back to all of your safety and you'll come back to all your stuff with a really um, renewed confidence, partly because you're like, oh, I'm safe now back where, where I'm still ah. smart. But also that's pushing those edges. That's where art lives. And I say art, and maybe that's not the right word for, for somebody listening to this, um, but if, if, man, if I would have, if I would have known that I'd be running a, a, a very healthy, um, I wouldn't even say business because I recognize that I am, you know, the artist here. And if I stop producing, then I'm, I probably don't make very much money. So I won't call it a business in the classical sense, but it's a very nice lifestyle. You know, high five, some six figure months with a phone, a credit card, a passport and an audience that I get to serve every day. Yeah. And so with that being said, it is scary to think about, well, I'm going to leave this. Well, you're not leaving anything. You're just tiptoeing into this other room in this giant house that you own. And mm. you're going to go spend a couple of hours in that room. 
So go and, and watch a YouTube video and learn to play, you know, uh, learn to play a song. Go and, and take a painting class. Go and take a cooking class. Go and take a tantra class. Go and take a class somewhere. Go and actually be the client you want to have. Go and pay full price for the most expensive thing that you, they're inspired to invest in. And watch what it does to you. Because you can't, you can't undo the, the, what that creates in your mind. And, and I never thought that I'd be, you know, having, having freaking piano videos shared on Instagram, you know, that, that was never part of my brand strategy, you know, but it was, it's a part of me. And I remember hesitating like crazy before I started posting music because I was like, I'm not that good. People aren't going to like it. Da, 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 da. I'm going to confuse people. And I thought, no, I, I, I don't even, it's, it's just part of me. So here I am, and this is a part of, of what I do. And and uh, sometimes people like it. Sometimes they're like, "That's weird," but even when it's weird, they can't forget it. And so it ends up having an overall very <laughs> hol- holistic, holistic, beneficial effect. <laughs> um. So this just came through to ask you. You know. Yeah. What What would you describe as your mission this lifetime? Like, what is the thing that you will be mastering quote unquote um, till, till the day you die. Uh, As you yeah, see man, it now. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, great. Great question. The fir- fir- first thing that comes up and I, and I, I love the way that you said that it uh, came through. So I'm just going to share answers back as they're coming through. Cause I don't have a scripted answer for any mm-hmm. of that. Um, I, the mission has already been completed. Uh, the moment that I shot out through, through the birth canal and entered into this duality, um, I won the game because mm-hmm. I just came, I just came here to experience, um, objectivity. I just came here to experience, um, subjectivity. I came here to experience up and down, left and right, light and dark, male yes. and female. And I've already done that. And I did that, you know, within the first you know couple of days of life. So I, I don't really have anything else that I'm here to accomplish. I've already, I already won. Um, I'm playing the bonus level now and I'm playing the, the bonus <laughs> round. So that, that's, that feels fun. Um, so that's the, on the mission part. I've, I've already accomplished it. Um, I, I do believe that uh, as near as I can tell that there is uh, reality is meaningless. There's, there's no inherent meaning in reality, which mm-hmm. means that we are both perceivers of reality, but we're also projectors of reality. And since, um, reality, the sum total of our senses, what we see, hear, feel, taste, touch, smell, th- if we call that our reality, um, it's always and only the residue of our manifestational output. So what we were thinking and feeling and saying and expecting, not even doing, doing is action is the last and least important part of the equation. Action is not how you make things happen. Action is how you enjoy what's already been set in motion by your thoughts, your expectations, your words, your feelings. So this, this saying, um, you know, it is what it is. No, it, it is what it was. What we're seeing now is the remnant of our manifestational output. So I'm, I'm just enjoying surfing the wave of, of reality and appreciating the um, residue of yesterday's and last week's manifestational output. And if anything ever pops in that seems a little bit wonky or not desired, it, it's only there because of my manifestational output, my MO from last week. Yeah. So if I change my MO right now, I, I, you mentioned something earlier about you know people's frequencies that we don't really resonate with. Man, I, I, I know that feeling. You know, you see somebody say something or do something and you're like, Ugh. but reality, man, I don't even see it anymore. Like mm. I, I, it doesn't, I don't even have an awareness hmm. of anything that doesn't resonate with me. I'm, I'm blind to it or, or I'll see that the little thread, you know, the golden thread within the, you know, shit colored tapestry. And I go, look at that golden thread. It's amazing. Mm. And then by doing that, boom, all of a sudden everything's golden. And that person who is a rat bastard to 38,000 other people is all of a sudden very nice and very resonating. And we're just having like this great conversation How because I, that's not my, not my experience of them. How interesting. So do you, 
when you, a lot of people use kind of their negative reactions or the, let, let's use your word, like the residue, right? That, that's showing up in their lives at the moment that doesn't fit within what they desire at the moment. And they kind of use that to hone in and, and look inward and say, okay, this is an opportunity for me. I get to work on this, you know, um, whether it's, you know, working with someone like you or me or internally yeah. meditation, whatever it is. So given what you just said, how are you kind of seeking your next growth opportunities? Where are those coming mm. from? Like, what do you, what do you, yeah. How are you expanding and working on what's next for you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and this is, this is where, uh, this is the beauty of vision and this is the beauty of, of, uh, allowing ourselves to be tactically inspired, mm. you know, having, having inspiration that comes in, it's like, Oh, that'd be cool. But no, it's just cool. Like leave out the butt. It's just cool. It doesn't ha you don't have to be driving. Like I, like I'm, I don't have a car, but I have a sense of what I want my next car to be. Mm. And so I don't need the car in the, in the valet, you know, to, to, to feel, I just like the feeling of thinking about the car. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, a 2018, uh, outine. There's the Freudian outine. slip 2018 Audi R8 V10, uh, white with the, you know, aluminum, uh, you know, the, the, the silver carbon fiber panels. I think that's a badass car. And that's the car that I've got my intentions on. Beautiful. So whether, whether it shows up a week from now or whether it shows up a year from now or whether I decide it's not mine right now, it feels cool to think about it. Hmm. And so in the meantime, there are billions of other things that are real right now in my life that fill me with so much appreciation, so much joy. Um, I don't use the word gratitude. I think gratitude is, is very impotent spiritually compared to active appreciation. But the, I, the feeling of a, literally appreciating things and then watching as they magnify, I mean, the word appreciation is so, and the feeling of appreciation not only means to give positive attention to something, but it also means to increase in value. Hmm. And, and as human beings, since we are reality projectors, not just reality perceivers, literally, we are the sun, the shining sun. And we have uh, this, this collection of nerves in our, in our center called the solar plexus. And, and that is the, the seat of our, of our soul. When we feel fully a sense of appreciation for something or someone or some aspect of our reality, it literally increases in value. Mm. And so, so growth um, I, I no longer experience growth as something that I have to do. That would be like me thinking I need to wake up in the morning and start spinning the planets or I need to start you know, <laughs> grow, growing that banana tree. No, I mean, I can't stop that banana tree from growing. It's just growing. It's in the dirt. It's got oxygen and a little sunlight, I guess, coming in. And that banana tree is just going to keep going or whatever the heck kind of tree. I don't see any bananas. But the idea that I have to grow is, is erroneous. I don't have to grow at all. Growth is happening with or without me. My choice is to participate and doing that through appreciating the, the positive aspects of what is with an eager anticipation of what's next. And both of those qualities, appreciation and anticipation, both of them can be cultivated. Both of them can be expanded. Both of them can, can um, be deepened. And so we literally can think and feel ourselves into a space of very uh, eager anticipation. And, and, and there's millions of tricks for doing that. I mean, you can think back to the time when you were six and you wanted a bike and, oh, you got a bike when you were 13. <laughs> Took a while, but that's fine. You can remember that anticipation. You can remember that anticipation, you know, from, from you know, when you, when you were first attracted to someone and then you were dating and the next thing you know, you're in love. I mean, that, that feeling you have access to. Um, so you can literally begin to feel anticipation about something, even if you don't have a particular object to, to feel excited about. You could just notice the feeling of anticipation. And literally, with, literally within seconds, because this is how our, our brains work, within seconds, you begin to, to identify a desire that may have been hidden behind logic. And once that desire pops in, you just notice it. You go, well, that's interesting. Hey, desire, hey. And you just kind of let it be. And you don't rush to make it happen, because that's the bullshit 
20th century mechanistic thing to do. Just appreciate the thing. It's like, oh, wow, that'd be interesting. Close your eyes, allow yourself to notice what it would be like and then let it go. And if it's an actual desire, an actual inspired thing, an actual um, reality sent back through the illusion of linear time by your future self to say, hey, psst, this is psst, over here. If that's real, it'll come back. Hmm. If it's not real, it won't. So just chill out. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a really, really interesting point because a lot of people, when they think of anticipation, it comes from a place of scarcity or lack. Right, like, right. I don't right. have this thing. And so they kind of flip flop back and forth. And I just love how you added this thing, like appreciate the anticipation, like appreciate mm -hmm. the feeling of wanting and desiring, which yeah. uh, have you, I'm sure you've read Gene Keys or like not front to back, but like have you heard I'm, 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 I'm familiar with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Katarina and I had a very brief conversation about it a couple of years ago and, and uh, I know a lot of people that are into it. I, I just, yeah, haven't. it's, it's actually really, really interesting. And desire is one of those things that they speak about how desire is something that people kind of frown upon. Um, and yet desire is the thing that for a species, like if we look at, at humanity as a species, desire is the thing that moves right, people, right? like desire yes. is the thing it's yes. the only thing that keeps us alive right like if there was no right. desire that's it we would yes. just be sitting here yep so it's yep. really interesting because they they take it like i like how in that book they, they make everything kind of like global mm. where you can go from the really really micro you know the individual to the super super macro which is mm the entire planet, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that you added that. And, and that's, it's interesting because I've also, I go back and forth. Okay. You know, if I'm desiring, then you have this question like, well, I'm lacking. That's why I'm desiring. Mm -hmm. But I love what you said about that, you know, cause I'm a car guy too. And I really do love call it daydreaming or, you know, putting myself in like, really, I love, doing that around cars yeah. Yeah. and what I've, what I've released, which I used to have is the attachment to like a timeline. Like I right. need to, you know, I want this car by this, 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 and it needs to look this way and that way. And now I just, I don't give a shit about that stuff. It's right. really kind of like you said, you know, it's putting it out there and knowing that yeah. When the time comes and if the time comes, that's what I get to receive. And until then I can be joyous and happy and, and prosperous and enjoy my life. And yeah. without that car there, my life is not any worse. It's not like I need that thing to make my life whole and complete right now. Right. Otherwise I feel not right. loved and accepted and belonging. Right. Um, well, and, and, on, and, on, and on that point, um, I, I have certainly lived many years of, of this particular life feeling like if I don't have a car, mm -hmm. I'm not successful. I'm not blah, 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 and all that stuff. And in that moment, getting the car is a noble, worthy, spiritual pursuit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I went from, you know, driving this, 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 I'll never forget. I, I had this Honda uh, Civic, like CRX, you know, it was like a little hatchback, you know, like, you know, it was, it was old car dreams when I was maybe 11. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, exactly. So I had this car, you know, then I was making payments on it. The payment was like, you know, 180 bucks a month. And, and that was, it was a great car, great fuel, you know, kind of a little sporty thing, blah, yeah. blah, blah. You know, for me at that time, it was, it was a cool car. Well, one of my martial arts students at the time was a general manager of the BMW Center in here in San Antonio. And he invited me to do this little uh, like charity thing. They did like a drive for the cure. You know, you know, you show up, you sign this thing, they give you keys to a car, you drive this course around the city, uh, and then you come back. And for every mile you drove, they donate money to the, you know, some, some cancer thing, which ironically, I drove all around the city. I never found the fucking cure. So I, I have my doubts about all of that. <laughs> I, I think that that probably is symptomatic of the whole cancer industry. But um, anyway, I remember, I remember driving to the BMW center in my nice Honda, getting in, uh, getting the keys to a Z3, right? The, the old James Bond car yep. convertible, man. So cool. And I'll, I was like, Oh my God. And I'm just like top down music crank and driving around the city. I did like eight miles, came back, gave him back my keys, walked back across the parking lot, 
Now, remember, I had, had driven to the car dealership in my nice Honda. Well, I got back into a piece of shit. Yep. And the car, the molecular structure of the car did not change one bit. But my perception had totally changed. And it became my mission in mm -hmm. life to get a BMW. And I had a lot of guilt around that. Like, oh, man, you know, I don't really need that to be happy. Why do I obsess over it? Blah, blah, blah. And then I realized, no, like you get to want what you want. Mm. And, and, and this is not a crime. This is not doing anything bad to anyone. And I began to focus on the positive aspects. And I realized that, well, if I have this car, back then it was a BMW M3. If I have an M3 as my dream car and I allow myself to obsess over it, all that's going to do is add fuel to my creativity because I, since I've identified that that's what I want and the only way that I'm going to get that is to make more money. And since money only comes from one place, every dollar that anyone has ever made only comes from one place. It doesn't come from the universe. It doesn't come from hard work. Money comes from other people's bank accounts. And since the only way money comes from other people's bank accounts is for an exchange of value, then I'm going to use the desire for this car mm. to give myself the fuel to be more creative and, and give more value so that I get more money. So I get my car. And so as a result, I enrolled lots of students that I wouldn't have enrolled otherwise. Hmm. I, I created more programs. I taught private lessons. I developed deeper connection with people because of a freaking car. Hmm. Now that might seem shallow that I'm just about the car, but no, the car spoke to my soul. Yeah. The car repre represented an upgrade of my identity. And, and, and I've continued to be at peace with that for my entire life, whether it's, you know, getting a, a, a huge house in Austin and, and, you know, having that experience or two years later, getting rid of everything and traveling nomadically. It was always just the best next thing. You know, what's mm. the right thing? What's the right thing right now? It's so powerful. So powerful. It's interesting. I've had two of those car moments. Mm. And, and until you said that story, it didn't occur to me that I was literally doing the exact same hmm. thing. So I awesome. a, Yeah, I sat in a VW R32 2004 Oof. auto show with my dad sat next to me and I put my hands on the wheel and I said, I'm going to own this car. Yeah. And at the time I was driving, I think like a generation three regular VW golf, you know, with like 70,000 miles on it that I bought for like six grand and love it. You know, I just started a new job and it was commission only. And there was like, I had no business <laughs> owning this near $40,000 car at the time. And two years later mm. in, the, in, in the strangest fashion. So we hired a guy, he became one of the salespeople under me and I, started looking for this car. It turned out his brother owned the exact car I wanted in the exact color I wanted and just happened to start up a conversation about selling it. Within a week, that car was in my driveway. <laughs> Within a week. It was just, it was so perfect. I and then love that. The same, the same thing with my current car. You know, I, I lost everything in 2010. Um, I ended up driving, I think it was like in 2010 or 11, my dad took me to, to race these uh, Caddy CTSVs and I saw the station wagon and I said, oh my God, I have to have this thing. And then, you know, our business, I, I lost everything. We were rebuilding everything. And when I finally found that car or it found me, um, I put a license plate on it uh, that says my Satori because it was really just mm. like a reawakening for me of just... It was like an acknowledgement of all the work that we've put mm -hmm. in personally and physically and emotionally to it almost the car almost felt like a resurrection. Yes. Yes. Um, it was, it was, it, it was, was. And, and representation. It's, yeah. And it's interesting that you say in that way, I didn't, I never actually looked at it from that perspective. It's like a thing that pulls you towards something that even if it's physical in nature where other people go, you know, why the fuck do you need this car or this or that to you? It's the thing that pulls and drives you and, and, uh, um, matters. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That, that was great. Yeah. Well, it's, it's literally all that matters is if it speaks to us and if we allow ourselves to feel the fullness of that, then, then that's fine. 
and mm. and 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 to, to do it without and 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 speaking subjectively now, to feel the desire and and also feel detachment at the same time. You know, I had I had the car in. Um, let's see. It was it was a few years ago. I I, I got a uh, Mercedes uh, CL63 AMG, like 604 horsepower, nice. like ridiculous car, like a rocket um, luxury. Like it was it was awesome, and I drove that car for a long time, and I loved it. It was a beautiful car, and then I went through a period where I just didn't care about money. Like I just didn't care about it. And I was still, you know, I mean, I was living in this big house and all this, but man, I was traveling. I was, I was on tour. I was uh, just really like into, you know, people and energy and the whole thing and not paying attention to my logistics, not paying attention to the fact that I had a, uh, what, what happened? Oh, it was like some PayPal thing, like PayPal froze money because they're the devil. And then <laughs> like a credit card payment didn't get paid. And then the auto debit for the car didn't go. And I'm on tour. Like, I'm not paying attention to anything. Wow. So all my little systems that I had set up completely collapsed. Next thing you know, um, and, I'm, you know and, and I get calls, but if I don't know who it is and it's not yeah, scheduled, I don't pick up. Some, sometimes, it, even if I know who it is, but it's not scheduled, I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> so anyway, I come back from, from being on tour and I go back to my house, 5,000 square foot house, and the car's not in the driveway. My fucking car got repossessed. Wow, and you, that's not the first thought you had, though. No, no, I was, I was like, huh, I wonder who's got my car. Yeah, and I'm literally going through like my buddies. I'm like, you know, I wonder who, who, because you know, they all know where the key is, like that. And I was like, oh, oh, and I'm like coming back to earth. I'm like, oh, 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 yeah. And then I just had this moment. I'm like, I'm, I'm running this amazing business, this amazing life. And my car got repossessed. <laughs> so good. And so I'm like, I finally dig through the emails. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, they've been trying to get a hold of me for three months. Pretty powerful. So I called, and and the only th- I didn't even care about. It. I was just laughing at the whole situation because I don't. It's like credit. I don't even care about credit. If I need something, where does the money come from? Wherever it is at the moment. Mm. And so I've stopped, I've stopped caring about that. There's nothing that I can imagine wanting. And I'm not giving, again, this is a description, not a prescription. Um, there's nothing that I can imagine that I can imagine wanting or wanting to create that I can't simultaneously have an idea about how to generate the income to get that thing. Mm. So it's just, I've, I've been living that way for years and, uh, and I'm completely a piece of it. And I love the way that works for me. Um, but there was one thing uh, in the car that I wanted. So I, I, you know, called the repo company. It was a very interesting experience. I took an Uber to the repo company. They have the office, which is not where the cars are, because you can imagine the num- number of stuff that they deal with. So I go, and it was the lowest frequency place you can imagine. Man. And uh, then they, they gave me a ride to the lot where the cars are. And I go, and there's my car you know, and it's been repossessed and I go and, and I open it up. And the only thing I wanted was there was a little uh, flask that my girlfriend at the time. Me. And uh, speaking of, speaking of calls coming in, there's a call. Um, so, so my girlfriend at the time had given me like a little, little whiskey flask and, and it was, it was important to me. And that's the only thing that I took out of the car and I got that flask and I put it in my pocket and uh, I think I did a video just kind of explaining like someday this is going to be hilarious. And that's it. And life went on. And mm. I continued to make lots of money and I continued to be abundant. And I'm sure at some point uh, I'm going to go and, and, you know, get a, get a car and they're going to be like, uh, what happened? And I'll be like, here's a check. Don't worry about it. It's just society has all these things that we are um, made to feel in fear of yeah. that if you don't have this, um, then you're, then you're going to be screwed, but that's just a remnant of, of control. You know, that's a centralized system trying to get people to be afraid. Um, and that, I'm not saying there's not merit in it. You know, if you go to school and you get grades, yeah, that, that I guess counts, but I've never taken a test. So I don't know. Hmm. You know I've, I've, I've never been to school, so I can't say, you know, grades are the key to success. Um, you know, like I don't have health insurance right now because no, I have a fucking perfect relationship with divine infinite intelligence and so what what external thing is there that's going to provide enough security for me 
So what if I get struck down with some disease? Cool, peace out. I already won the game like 44 years hmm. ago. So there's, there's, uh, there's that. I love that, man. Jesse, I could literally sit here all day talking to you, and I knew that this was exactly what was going to happen. Um, yeah, I just um, – I love your perspective. Uh, I love – where this journey is taking you and where you invite people and where you invite people. Thank you, man. It's been, uh, been a real pleasure today. Like just uh, leading edge for sure. Yeah, man. I um, just thank you for, for being on this planet at this time and doing what you do and inviting people to go on this incredible ride we call life with you. Um, I'm really like excited guys, for man. paths to cross like in, in, in physical form at some in point. Physical, physical real time. Yeah, and man. We'll serve, serve, some, serve some frequencies. There'll be music uh, for sure. Absolutely. Man, thanks for spending time with us. And um, awesome. for, for people that want to find out more about you, where, where can they go and check you out? Uh, Facebook is a great place. Insta is really good. Uh, Insta is Jesse Elder Live. Facebook is... Um, just, I've got a couple of pages, personal page and, and, uh, and an author page. Um, also, we just set up a website called averageisnotsafe.com. Um, and it is a kind of cobbled together thing. I just put a uh, manifesto, that post that I mentioned that, that kind of took off. Um, we, we put the entire manifesto up there for free. Um, and so averageisnotsafe.com. That's a good place for people to get some, uh, some mind vitamins. Awesome. Absolute pleasure, man. Thank you so much for uh, spending time with Likewise. us. Likewise. Sounds great, man. Say hi to your brother for me. Will do. All right, guys. We'll uh, see you on the next uh, Have It All podcast. Have an amazing day.